Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm here to talk Impact Wrestling, and I'm here to break down the top takeaways. I'm about to hop right now into this thing and review as well. So, feel free to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified of every video that I make. We're about to hop into this. The first takeaway is a Moose Beatdown. He delivered on his promise from last week. So, we had Moose versus Wentz, Zachary Wentz, and... It was a really good opener. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Moose's drop kick. Uh, Zachary Wentz's dive over the top was very impressive as well. The springboard knee from Zachary Wentz was very impressive as well. This was a fantastic match. I enjoyed it. When uh, Moose threw Zachary Wentz over the top on the rest of the Rascals, that was very impressive as well. It was a good match. And at the end of the day, Moose would pick up the win with the spear. He delivered on his promise from last week. I don't know if they redecorated the That 70s Show room. We'll have to find out next week. So, my next takeaway is not a good match. We had Sue Young versus Rosemary. And I got to say that it was not as good a match as I thought it would be. Uh, I, like, I enjoyed Rosemary's Tarantula. There were some pretty decent spots in this match. At best, Rosemary, Rosemary's, excuse me, German Suplex and Spear. I enjoyed it. Toward the end of the match, Kira Hogan would come down and she would get Rosemary's attention. And from there, we would get a beat down on Kira Hogan and Rosemary. The Undead bride, Bridesmaids and Sue Young would lay the beat down on them. It, the match would end in the DQ. And I'm assuming we're going to get another Rosemary versus Sue Young match. That will get a lot of time. So I'll give it a chance. We'll see how it all turns out going forward from here. So this is not much of a takeaway. But this was a little bit of a promo from backstage. Ace Austin talked about his loss. Uh, last week and he talked about how he wanted to get back at Aiden Prince that should be a phenomenal match I cannot wait to see it I assume next week and I'm all in on Ace Austin I really like the guy so moving on to the next takeaway Killer Mind Games Killer Cross was sitting with Willie Mack he asked him if he liked jazz I was like oh, what's going on here and he eventually told him that we're backstage is that Rich Swan is playing Mac for a fool. So we got Killer Cross out here messing around with Willie Mac, just stirring up stuff backstage. We'll see how that one turns out going into next week. We also had the Deaners once again. This is not much of a takeaway as well. Just another segment that played. I got to see what the Deaners are all about. They got them in this stereotypical beer drinking country stereotype hopefully they work themselves out of that you know i don't know much about these guys but the daters are here and we eventually will see them the north dominance is the next takeaway we had the north ethan page and josh alexander versus sheldon jane and el reverso this was a pretty decent showcase i'll up uh, two thumbs up for the matching gear, by the way, from the North. You know, I, I, I have not been the biggest fan of Ethan Page, but I enjoyed this tag team, I gotta say. And two weeks, when they hooked up last week, they had already been a tag team in other promotions, but they hooked up last week in Impact Wrestling. I enjoyed that promo, and this week, I enjoyed them in the ring. I thought the match should have been more of a showcase for the North. It ended up turning into a decent match that Sheldon Jean and El Reverso got some offense in, but I thought it really should have been like 90% of offense toward the North and 10% offense toward Sheldon Jean and El Reverso. But nonetheless, I enjoy these guys. The North picked up the victory with a tag team spine buster. I enjoyed that. That's their finishing maneuver, and I'm interested. What's going to happen when they move up the ranks in the tag team division? I really see a lot of potential for these guys. I'm interested in Ethan Page. I'm interested in Josh Alexander. They did a nice job with the uh, videos as he made his way up onto his debut. And the North looked really good last night. So I enjoy these guys and I cannot wait 
to see where they go from here. My next takeaway is Tessa hates Gail and Gail hates Tessa. Madison Rain versus Tessa Blanchett. This match, it was decent enough, but they spent a whole lot of the match with Tessa Blanchett going at Gail Kim, walking to the announce table, talking to Gail Kim. I didn't really like that. I, I get that you have to advance the feud, but not at the behest of the match. Uh, we had a nice cold breaker from Tessa Blanchard, which led us into commercial break. Tessa Blanchard even pulled out the Tully Blanchard sling, a, a rope suplex. I enjoyed that. I haven't seen her do that uh, since she's been at Impact. But toward the end of the match, Tessa Blanchard went for the chair, was going to nail Madison Rain with it, and Gail Kim took the chair away. This got Tessa Blanchard's attention, and Madison Rain got the roll up for the win. Now, I don't really like Tessa Blanchard taking losses and impact, especially just on shows, but I like the way they did it. This advanced Gail Kim versus Tessa. Ah, uh, this got Madison Rain. Madison Rain needed a victory. Like she just debuted. She lost that match in the beginning. And I didn't really want to see her take another loss. So I like the way that they did it. It protected Tessa Blanchard. Madison Rain gets a much needed victory. And we're off with Tessa Blanchard versus Gil Kim at Rebellion. So, decent enough. And I enjoyed the match overall. So, my next segue is an all-ego promo. Ethan Page. I uh, talked about how they were the North. And how they were putting everybody on notice. I enjoyed this pro promo from Ethan Page and Josh Alexander. They did a phenomenal job. I buy him on the promo. I buy him on the match in the ring so like i said i'm very interested in these guys and where they go my next takeaway is another lucha brawl so eddie Edwards and eli drake were backstage when they ran up on the lucha brothers talking about how they wanted the tag team title shot but before they can even really get into that conversation there was lax and we had ourselves a huge brawl eddie Edwards and eli drake got out of dodge and People came in, uh, officials came in to break it up. And the feud continues with LAX and the Lucha Brothers. Obviously, Eddie Edwards and Eli Drake won't be getting involved with Eli Drake being let go over the weekend. But they did pick up a huge victory over LAX. But it's looking like we're going to stick to LAX versus the Lucha Bros going forward. So moving on. OVE Dark Alley promo. That's my next takeaway. I enjoyed it. So they talked about Rich Swan. Uh, Sammy Callahan once again talked about taking everything from Rich Swan, including his title. The last time he said that Sammy Callahan came up short. We'll see what happens this time. Talked about how if it wasn't for Sammy Callahan, Rich Swan would be living on the streets. And sometimes I tried to give him a family, tried to give him everything, but Rich Swan turned him down. So I enjoy these little OVE promos. It was different this time. They were in a dark alley down a dark road on some dark streets. It's interesting. And I cannot wait for Rich Swan versus Sammy Callahan. That is going to be a phenomenal match. Uh, in the running for match of the night candidates as it pertains to rebellion i gotta go deeper into rebellion as well because that is looking like a potential candidate for pay-per-view of the year all of those matches are solid man and i cannot wait to see them so my next takeaway is that follow by and scarlet we have them teaming up so follow by was backstage he was interrupted by scarlet bardot and she talked about how he was looking for a tag team partner next week and that she would be willing to fill the slot. So next week, we will have the Desi Hit Squad versus Followed by and Scarlet Bordeaux. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I cannot wait to see Scarlet Bordeaux where she goes as a knockout as opposed to these little side things they have her doing. But I don't mind Followed by and Scarlet Bordeaux here because they actually have a backstory with Followed by and KM was trying to get at Scarlet Bordeaux when she was doing a talent search. So there's a backstory here and I appreciate it. So moving on, we have the last takeaway and that is an excellent main event 
uh, Johnny Impact and Tiger versus Brian Cage and Jordan Grace. And Johnny Impact really played the cowardly heel really well here. And I enjoyed him as well dropping down, not getting a tag from Jordan Grace, running away from it. Uh, there were some phenomenal spots in this matchup. Uh, Brian Cage hit a 360 backdrop. Like he backdropped Johnny Cage and Johnny Impact, excuse me. And he did two rotations, not one in that backdrop. There was, like I said, some great spots. Jordan Grace's running power bomb was really nice in this one as well. But the two spots of the match was the Jordan Grace suicide dive followed by the Brian Cage suicide dive. The crowd was just going wild in those two spots. And I don't know what it is about Windsor, but that crowd is just phenomenal every week. But we get down to the end of the match. It's looking like Brian Cage is about to put Johnny Impact away. And Johnny... Bravo comes in top blocks Brian Cage and that would give Johnny Impact the win the quick pin count as well on Brian Cage Johnny Impact picks, picks up the win and boy that is how you turn a negative into a storyline uh, we got the beat down on Brian Cage afterwards Johnny Bravo stands tall with Johnny Impact and Taya and going all the way back to homecoming, I think it was, we had the big uh, dissension and the big discussion about what happened at the end of the match with Johnny Impact and Brian Cage. Did the referee blow it, blow it? Who blew it? Did Impact blow it? And it doesn't even matter now because they turned that negative into a positive, into a storyline. Now Johnny Bravo, it looks as though Johnny Impact pay, paid off Johnny Bravo for all those months for that finish and for what he's done going forward so i enjoyed i enjoyed the match i'm pretty sure they johnny bravo they're gonna come out and they're not gonna have him referee uh what it is impact rebellion and it's gonna be a true blue one-on-one -on -one match at rebellion that i'm pretty sure brian cage is gonna pick up the victory at but we'll see i'll save my predictions for when i have to do a prediction show Johnny Impact and Taya picks up the win over Brian Cage and Jordan Grace. So let me know your thoughts, whether that's in the YouTube comments, or you can hit me up on Twitter, at OMGCoreyB, or at 2SweetPOD. That's the number 2, Sweet P-O-D.